Hey guys, today what I want to talk to you about is my contagion kit. And this is something that we try to keep on hand in case there is any kind of outbreak, any kind of epidemic or pandemic or whatever, uh, to be able to keep me and my family safe and to protect ourselves from these things as much as possible. And so we're going to look at some different items and I highly recommend guys, not just because of the coronavirus, but this should be a stepping stone for you to go ahead and put together a kit to be able to keep yourself healthy and well in the face of a threat that's biological or that is viral. Now guys, besides just all that's in the media, uh, my son Seth right now is upstairs sick with what we think is probably the flu. And so taking care of him and having the items we need to keep ourselves clean, keep him healthy, and keep us healthy. The coronavirus coming out of Wuhan, China uh, is big news right now. But with that being said, you know, influenza kills tens of thousands of people over and over. Uh, every year, at least 10,000 people in the U.S. die from influenza. And so to put it in perspective, guys, you know, we need to look at it as uh, this could be something a lot bigger but we're already facing you know an epidemic in proportions plus a lot of people though with influenza are immune they built up an immunity to it and that's one of the big things about the coronavirus and other potential viruses that could come through is that they're new and they spread like crazy now at this point right now there's only like 208 people in china that have been reported to have died from the coronavirus and there's about 3,000 or so that have been confirmed infected. Uh, guys, I feel like that the numbers are a lot higher than that. Uh, and there's a lot of other people that really suspect that that's the case. And it's one of the things about China, they just really don't give out a lot of information. Secondly, it is a crime punishable by seven years to actually talk about the coronavirus on video. And I just read that recently or to, or to report something out of China. And so that is another thing that we're not getting the information I really feel that we are. But going from current numbers, and that's all we can do. Hong Kong even says there may be 45,000 that are contracted, and there could be well beyond that. But here in the U.S. at this point, there's only six confirmed cases, and they're pretty much contained. But guys, as time tr goes through, we're going to find out. But here's the thing. Whatever that I'm going to show you, is going to be good for any virus. It's just a good protocol and a good way to put supplies together in what I call my contagion kit. <laughs> and this has the supplies that I feel like I need to have on stock in case things really go out of hand. And so one of the big things that you need to make sure you do is wash your hands. And that's a big one. Wash your hands for about 20 seconds with soap and water. It's just excellent. Get everything off your hands. Put that hot water or you know, get the germs off. And so make sure you keep your hands washed regularly. Uh, another thing is, is not to put your hands up to your mouth, your eyes, your nose. And so that, that's just a big one. Uh, and then two, not getting in super close contact with people. In fact, the CDC says you need to have at least six feet from you and someone else. You know, and then definitely if people are coughing, sneezing, or showing any kind of symptoms, to definitely not get around those people. Because if they do have the coronavirus or any other virus, those are coming out and you're easier to contract it. And so those are just some basic things. It's just like you would do in the flu season. You stay away from certain people. Now, if you contract the virus, number one, seek medical help immediately and call ahead, let them know that you may be concerned because of some kind of connection that may be there for, from Wuhan or from China at all. Uh, one thing a lot of people like to do is to cough in their elbow or sneeze in their elbow. Uh, the problem with that is you do that and you put your hand here and then you reach out and you shake someone's hand or you put your hand somewhere. And so guys, make sure that you want to carry some tissue around or some kind of handkerchief or something to be able to sneeze, cough, whatever in that. And then that way you're not spreading it around to even more areas. So following just basic health protocol is number one. And that's really one of the big things as far as here in the U.S. Now, of course, we've obviously seen a lot of Chinese wearing the mask. And a lot of these are just cloth little masks that fit over their face. And to be honest with you, uh, as far as what I'm hearing, they're not really effective from keeping you from getting the virus. A lot of times, you know, air is coming on the outside, coming in, into the mask. Uh, one of the things about the coronavirus specifically is that it typically isn't like airborne. It usually falls to the ground quickly or falls to a surface. And so again, making sure that you don't put your hand on a surface where someone has just sneezed and then putting your hand up to your mouth. 
Now, the big thing about the mask is, is number one, it'll keep you from putting your hand up to your mouth. If you have a mask on, you put your, instead of putting your hand up, you're gonna hit the mask. And so if nothing else, that is one reason why you would be a smart move to have a mask. Now this is one of the N95 masks. A lot of medical professionals use this and they use upgraded masks as well. But N95 seems to be about the minimum that you wanna go with. Uh, and a lot of this stuff, guys, is available on eBay or Amazon. Now, from what I'm seeing, a lot of, of this stuff is getting bought up uh, because people are concerned. And so definitely, if you get a chance, you want to go ahead and maybe pick up some of these masks to put in your kit for viruses and epidemics and things like that. I mean, this is a prepper channel. So we're trying to look at it as in, it may not be just the coronavirus, it could be any virus. And so here, we've got our mask. I have them already, I don't have to worry about it now. But one thing I also did, picked up some of the P100 respirators. And these are a little more expensive, but they're more advanced than the, just the N95s. But the big thing is, is even if you keep your face covered with a bandana, at least you're not putting your hands up to your face and your nose, but also your eyes. And that is a big part, I think, that I'm not seeing from Chinese people that we've seen a lot of the video and pictures coming from Wuhan and uh, Hubei province. And so one thing that's really important is to cover those eyes. Now, obviously, this is just some actually lab glasses and they're not really sealed but they would keep germs and things from hitting you directly in the eye and it does have covers on the side now i do have some of the standard goggles that you put on that will seal up your face and i would definitely recommend those as well in fact i just didn't have my hands on them but those to me would be the best move but definitely having something to cover up your eyes along with a mask now, one thing that I do have is one of these shields, and you'll see a lot of people, especially in the medical industry, when they have these kind of uh, epidemics or pandemics, they have on these face shields and the mask on underneath, even goggles, and that just gives you an added protection. I, I probably wouldn't use anything like this unless I was treating someone with a dangerous virus. Uh, another thing that I did was picked up some of the surgical gloves. Now, these are actually sterile, uh, and one thing that the CDC said is use non-sterile gloves. Uh, but you want to wash your hands for 20 seconds in hot water with soap before you put your gloves on. And then when you pull your gloves off, then you, know, you want to wash your hands again, and you want to dispose of those gloves, especially if you have been in contact with somebody. And so guys, if you're caring for someone that has even the flu, but definitely the coronavirus or others, you want to make sure that you protect yourself as long as protecting those people. Now, as I mentioned about washing hands, guys, I don't care where you are, you're at the restaurant, you're doing whatever, you're, you're out in public, wash those hands good, but be careful not to reach up and grab a door when you're going out. You've just picked up more germs or put your hand on the sink, turning off the water. I mean, you know, if it's not one of those automated, automatic, you know, where it turns the water on and off, is you're going to contaminate your hands again. And so be careful to wipe that off. One thing too is, if you're going to wash your hands and you're messing around with your phone, which everybody does, and then you wash your hands and then you pick your phone back up and start messing with it, you could possibly transfer the virus to you. And so again, whatever surfaces you're touching, uh, there's a lot of different things that we put our hands on. And so we have to be careful uh, even what we have on. Now, one thing that I don't have uh, is a smock that you could put over, you know, some kind of apron or something that, you know, when you see the people that are healthcare professionals, they're in all white. And those smocks, those things keep people from transferring the, the virus or whatever it is to other places. And that might be also a good idea. And then you have your hand sanitizers and they have a lot of alcohol in them, which really helps as well. And this is Germex. It's just a hand sanitizer. They have them all over the hospitals or in different places when you go, just squeeze out a little bit. The problem is, even though it possibly kills the bacteria or whatever's on your hands, it stays on your hands. So it's really good actually to also wash your hands as well. Another thing that's really good are baby wipes. Having baby wipes, uh, there's a lot of properties and some you can buy that actually are antimicrobial, but they will wipe away any kind of germ, any kind of virus that's left. Of course, having just your normal cleaning stuff like the Clorox wipes. I mean, Clorox wipes are great. Alcohol, like ethyl alcohol, that's 70% alcohol, that's an excellent cleaner as well. In fact, a lot of hospitals use alcohol. And then keeping areas clean with Pine Sol, 
and definitely Lysol. Lysol is a good disinfectant. Here we have some in a spray bottle and uh, it's diluted some and then we have the Lysol in a can. So Lysol has been known to kill germs. And then we even have some Dawn dishwashing detergent that's antimicrobial. And so there's a lot of things that are out there to keep your surfaces clean, keep your areas clean. And so that is one big thing. And, and there's a host of others, but those are just some of the basics and you need to have those on hand. Now, one big thing too is, is just having your immune system built up and eating right, eating good foods. That is important. Uh, most of the people that have died, again, have, are elderly and their immune systems are down because a lot of them already have pre-existing conditions. And so definitely with like vitamin C, with zinc, with a vitamin D3, I mean, you can look and see different type vitamins. A, a vitamin A is also a good one or just a good multivitamin and taking those and keeping those in your system to help your body fight whatever's going on. Now, one of the things about the coronavirus, because they have no vaccine for it, and really once you get it, it's too late anyway, is that they want to treat the symptoms. They want to treat your fever. They want to give you fluids if you need them. You know, they're monitoring your, because pneumonia is what sets in. And so they want to monitor all those and help relieve you as much as possible to allow your body's own immune system to fight it. And that's what it takes. It takes your immune system. Fever management with Advil, Tylenol, aspirin. I mean, that's a good way to keep their, your body, you know, from being in pain, uh, being sore. And then also it uh, relieves a lot of your fever. Now, fever does actually mean that you're fighting the virus. And so you don't want to completely do away with your fever. That just allows for your body to take care of things. Uh, one thing too is, guys, is there is a lot of different uh, homeopathic type medicines out there. And some of those, in fact, India just recommended a whole list of things that are traditional medicines in India. My wife does a lot with essential oils and there's certain ones that she has and some of them have really proven to work very well for us. And so that might be something to look at. Colloidal silver, uh, that is a, a really important element that kills viruses. Uh, silver has been used for, in the medical industry for decades uh, and so it's one of those things that kills germs, it treats burns and other things. But we have had a lot of success over the years using colloidal silver and so that might be something that you're not going to find at your normal store. You may have to go to more of a, a health food store. That is definitely something that we keep for ourselves. And of course, the regular things that take care of flu, you know, Tamiflu, but this probably wouldn't work with this new coronavirus, but having some medicines to be able to take care of your congestion and your cough, especially if you're getting something that attacks the lungs. Uh, for nasal, I know we use nasal spray, uh, which even if you use just sea salt in a mist, that definitely will give you some relief. And so there's a lot of things out there just to have on hand to not only give you relief, but also to build up your immune system and to get you healthy. And again, guys, make sure that you're eating healthy, uh, eating as healthy as you can right now, maybe a little more than normal, and just keeping yourself in good shape. So having supplies you need, having cleaning materials, things to be able to get rid of any kind of virus is important, and then ways to treat those things is very important keeping your hands washed, keeping your hands away from your face, your nose, eyes, and ears, because that's where a lot of these viruses are coming in. Once you just watch over those, it just lessens your vulnerability to these kind of different viruses. And as we watch the coronavirus, what happens with it, it remains to be seen, we'll see. But again, guys, this is not necessarily just about corona, it's about any type of virus that we may encounter, or even worse and being able to protect yourself from it. Having a kit like this is just important. But guys, at this point right now, a lot of things are being balled up. So if you're looking for something, you may wanna go ahead and pick it up now if you can. So guys, while this isn't fear mongering, guys, I want you to be prepared in case anything comes. Viruses and different things like that happen every year. I mean, we've seen SARS, MERS, swine flu, bird flu, you know, and now the coronavirus. Uh, guys, it's always something. And while we look at it, we can't always dismiss it. Uh, it's good to kind of keep our eye on it. Not necessarily be worried, but be ready if it does get worse because you want to protect you and your family. Guys, if you're serious about prepping and survival, check out Survival Dispatch Insider, one of the best resources on the web for credible information from a lot of world-renowned survival experts. We upload one video a week that's exclusive to the Insider. I'll have a link down below in the description. Check it out. Be strong, be of good courage.
God bless America. Long live the Republic.